Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. As you know, challenges are a really popular and fun way to make progress in just about any area you're trying to make progress in, whether it is a no spin challenge to help with your finances or a decluttering challenge to help get the clutter out. So today I'm gonna to share with you a boost challenge for all of the key core components that you need in order to really boost your home to the next level and create a space that you love. Now, if you're interested in doing the boost challenge for yourself and getting the daily prompts, then I have the link to this challenge down in the description. Kicking it off with a B, the B is for boundaries. And as you'll notice with most of the words in this acronym, there really are two meanings. So one being how you implement in this example, boundaries in your home. And then the other being how you implement boundaries in your life, which can then trickle down into being reflected inside of your home. So as far as boundaries for people, and I also think that this definitely includes ourselves. So, you know, like our impulses to shop for certain things or our tendencies to collect certain things, not just getting and bringing everything everything in that you want, not just like tossing things wherever you want, because that's what you feel like doing in the moment. Having some kind of structure or boundaries for yourself is always going to be reflected inside of your environment, but also having boundaries with other people. Like if I don't have boundaries for my kids, then there's going to be stuff everywhere. That's just the way it is. And I talk to people all the time who are like the entire living room is covered in kid toys or like, you know, every time my kids need to go get a drink, they grab a new glass. And so now my countertop is just lined with 10 new glasses each and every day. So just having these boundaries and expectations for yourself and the other people in your life can greatly help to reduce the clutter and keep a zen and peaceful space. But then on a more microscopic and tangible level, having boundaries for your stuff is huge. Having a spot for everything, categories that belong in certain zones. I'm a big fan of what I like to call spatial constraints, where you have firm borders for things and there's a dedicated home or category that belongs within those firm borders. And the great thing about that is that it's very very clear and evident to you and to everybody else when those boundaries are breached. This is the right amount of stuff for me because this is the space that I have dedicated and allotted to this category of item. What's one boundary that you could set, whether it's for your stuff or for the people in your life or for yourself? Like, where do you think you can get the biggest bang for your buck by setting one boundary? The first O in the boost challenge is for obstacles. So this is removing all of the things that keep us from achieving the goals that we set for ourselves. In this case, a clutter-free or spacious Zen home space. Now, if you've been around very long, then you know something that I commonly say is that our clutter isn't resistant, we are. Our biggest obstacle to letting go of the things that we need to let go of or want to let go of even is ourself. The mental attachments or the emotional issues with just letting go of things that we might need someday or that we worry we might miss or an idea for ourselves that we just struggle with letting go of. Like my guitar from college. I had this guitar, I held on to it for like 10 years and I did learn how to play maybe two songs, not very well on it. long time ago, but I didn't actually get rid of the guitar until just a few years ago because every time I would go to sell it or, you know, to let go of it, I would start thinking, okay, well, you know, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to start practicing guitar because that's something that I really want to do. But the truth is I was never going to do it because honestly, it wasn't a priority for me. It wasn't something that I chose ever to invest my free time into. Instead, I would play video games or watch a movie with the family or listen to audiobooks. you know, like we all have some kind Kind of free time. We often say, I don't have time to do this, but usually it's just that we don't really want to prioritize the time to do that thing because it's just not that important to us. I did this whole video on the clutter source that you didn't know you had, and it has little skits of just how we get in our way of letting go of the things that we want to let go of. What's one thing that you could let go of today that you've been standing in the way of? The second O is for order. And this is another one of those that has a macro application as well as a micro application inside of your home. So in a broader sense, we're talking about the order of events and the order of events are declutter, organize and then optimize. A lot of times people will do this all out of sync and it just messes up all of your progress and causes you to do this whole decluttering and cycles and starting over because you're organizing things that maybe you don't even need to be keeping. So you're wasting your efforts and your energy and trying to organize and reorganize clutter and not actually get, getting rid of the stuff that needs to be let go of. And the truth is the entire structure of your organization could change depending on what items you have left to organize. And I get it because organizing is usually a lot more fun than decluttering. Decluttering can be a drag, right? It's not necessarily fun to go through the hard work of letting go of things that you don't necessarily 
feel like letting go of, even if you're not using it. It just, it's like extra effort on your part, emotional effort, physical effort. Whereas organizing taps into that whole patterns part of our brain, the part of our brain that loves seeing rows and columns and, you know, color coordination and all of that. Like patterns are how we think and process information. And so we enjoy doing that. We enjoy seeing it, but mass is mass. And there's really only so far you can go as far as creating space with organizing versus just letting go of stuff. And the more micro application of the word order is how you're using it inside of your home, the method in which you're bringing whatever kind of order you're bringing into your space. Now, a lot of people resist the word order and everything that it implies, kind of like I talked about in my video on designing a simple life, that I used to really resist the idea of simple living because it just sounded mind-numbingly boring. And my status quo was living with more excitement and chaos and drama and just stuff going on. And I couldn't even fathom, like it made me feel like I wanted to die, just the idea of living a calm, simple Zen life. That totally changed once I realized that creating a simple life was all about more of the things that I love and less of the stuff that I hated and that made me feel bad. Well, it's kind of the same way with order. Even nature, which seems really chaotic, has an order and an ebb and flow to things. So just like simplicity for me, I encourage you to embrace the word order as being something that could potentially be really beautiful inside of your life and definitely inside of your home. But our method of creating that order is often so counterintuitive because we're running around, we're multitasking, we're trying to do all of the things at once and in the process, we're we're greatly decreasing our efficiency and our results. We kind of do that whole rat race like constantly just multitasking and focusing our attention in one area and then another area and then three different areas at once. Research calls this context switching. Our brain is rapidly trying to fire and focus on this and then this and then this and then this and it's exhausting and it wastes your time. So instead, I recommend that you do something I call working in modes. And this is where you're focusing on a singular type of task or a singular category of items and completely depleting that throughout your house before moving on to something else. So what's one category or task that you could focus in on and knock out in an hour or a day at the most? Now, if you're wanting some examples of different modes you can work in, then again, I recommend that you check out the official challenge because it'll break down things into prompts. But for now, let's move on to the S, which is to simplify. Now again, macro, micro, of course, simplifying your life can be a really broad subject and there are a lot of different facets and factors that can go into that, but I'm not gonna dive super deep into that because I recently did a video on the only three things that you need in order to design a simple life. So instead, I'm gonna link that here. But on a micro level, using simplicity inside of your home and inside of your space can make such a big difference. You know, I don't know why it is, if it's because our brains like to solve problems or because unique contraptions are just interesting to look at, like they're more visually entertaining, but a lot of times we're naturally drawn to the more complex organizing systems. The things with like three layers of plastic that has latches and spins or the five part filing system with color coded tabs to organize all of our papers. And more often than not, these things end up being additional barriers. And not only that, but when we stop using them, then they just become more clutter. So it's like a revolving door. You know, you buy something to organize all of your clutter and then those organizers don't work out. So they add to the clutter. And so you buy more organizers to organize that clutter and it just keeps going and going. But the solution to that is, of course, just to simplify, to simplify the structure inside of your space. One of the simplest things you can do is just to minimize the stuff that you're organizing. You know, we don't only complicate our organizing systems, we also complicate our stuff. You know, we overcomplicate our wardrobe to where it's something that we're not gonna wear 75% of. That's why you hear about a lot of really successful people who own an entire closet full of the exact same outfit to decrease that decision fatigue and just to really simplify. It helps to simplify their day, gives them one less thing to think about. You know, if you look in any of my videos, now I have a pretty minimal wardrobe and I don't necessarily just wear the same thing every day, but honestly, it's pretty close. <laughs> if you look at like any of my videos and the B-roll in the background, I'm probably wearing something like this. In fact, our sponsor for today is Cozy Earth who create these bamboo loungewear as well as sheets and comforters and other things for your home. But if you look at any of my videos over the past month or two, chances are you're gonna see me and one of these two identical sets of loungewear that I have because that's what I wear. I've got one in ivory, which gives me the lighter tones. And then I've got one in this darker charcoal 
full color. I wear one and then I'll wash it and I'll wear the other one while it's washing. I think that it looks good. It's easy to throw on and off and it's all made out of sustainable bamboo so I can feel good about wearing it. So I'm simplifying my wardrobe to include more of the things that I know I'm gonna wear, comfy lounge wear, and less of the things that I'm just not going to wear. Whether it's a closet or a drawer or just a little cubby or drop box that's on the entry table. What's one area that you can really simplify either the structure, meaning the organizing system, or the things that you're holding on to in there. And the fifth piece of the boost system, try saying that five times fast, is tenacity. All of the best systems in the world mean nothing without consistency and consistency requires tenacity. I mean, I think that everyone knows that consistency is required in order to see results, right? Like that's the main reason that we don't stick to our goals that we set for ourselves, whether it's like for New Year's resolutions or any other time of the year, is because we're just not consistent with the things that we need to do in order to see those results and achieve those goals. And the reason we're not consistent is often because we just don't have the willpower to follow through, right? It's not like you wake up and you forgot that you needed to exercise for the day or you forgot that you weren't supposed to eat the five donuts or that you were supposed to study for a test or finish a work project. You know, we usually know what we're supposed to be doing. We know that we need to be consistent. It's just that in the moment, we don't feel like it. You know, we lose that tenacity, that willpower to do the thing that we know that we need to do, even if we really want the results. A study posted in 2009 by the Journal of social psychology said that it takes on average 66 days to cement a new habit. That takes some tenacity. And we need tenacity not only in the initial stages when we're letting go of the clutter, like to stick with it, to actually get the stuff out the door and create the organized and beautiful optimized spaces that we want, but we also especially need it after the fact so that we don't lose all of that progress. Something that I've shared about a lot because it's pretty much everything that I talk about here and on the blog and on the podcast is a holistic system for creating a space that you love. And the fifth part of that holistic system is a solid maintenance structure because without that, all of the hard work that you do is for nothing because it's all gonna become unraveled. Now there are three parts to a solid maintenance structure that is routines, habits, and systems. I talk about systems here because I know that's the one we hear about the least. So you can see right here about the 15 systems that have simplified my life. In The Power of Habits, Charles Duhigg talks about how willpower is a learned skill and it is a habit in itself. So the more you practice using that willpower, the stronger it becomes and the more you're going to more naturally be using it in other areas of your life. So if you have strong willpower in one area, it's very likely that you're gonna also have strong willpower in another area. But if you don't, that is a skill that you can develop. The best way to start though, is to take one tiny routine, something that's really small that you feel like you could stick with, with pretty minimal effort, and then be tenacious and practice that tenacity in that one thing. So I challenge you to find one tiny routine that you can be consistent with every day for at least 60 days until that cements into a habit. And not only will you be helping yourself in the area of whatever that routine is, whether it's like a routine of putting your dishes directly into the dishwasher or of like waking up every morning and doing a quick sweep of the house, like whatever it is that you choose to do, not only are you going to be strengthening yourself in whatever area that routine is focusing on, but you'll also be strengthening your tenacity and willpower in the process. One last reminder that the actual challenge for this that has the daily prompts is down in the description. So if you really want to focus in on doing a daily challenge in each of these steps, you can access that down in the description. Now I know I mentioned a lot of resources. So next up, I recommend that you check out either this video on simplicity or this video on systems. Both of those are great places to dive a little deeper and keep the train going. And I will chat with you next week. And the fifth piece, and the fifth piece of this, try saying that five times fast.